peace to you, my brothers and sisters, in the precious, powerful, majestic name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a brand new day and a brand new year, and there are new hopes, new potential, new challenges, and I'm sure there are new victories ahead of us in 2021. The Bible says, therefore, if any man, any woman, any boy or girl be in Christ, he is a new creation and old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So it's a new year for a new you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you praise him with me? Because living he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried all my sins away. Rising, he justified freely forever. And one day, he's coming back. Oh, glorious day. But this day, this day, why don't you give him the glory for all that he's done for us, how he kept us, how he was with us every step of the way in 2020. How he provided for us with his presence, with his provision, with his peace, and with his power. We praise God, for he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we ask or imagine. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for seeing us through. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Arthur W. Goforth III the pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church 707, Arista Road, Bowman, South Carolina. It's a wonderful church family because it has wonderful people who love and serve a wonderful God. Check us out on our webpage. Check us out on, on Facebook and YouTube and tell others about us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I just want to remind you, even though we've crossed into... 2021 from 2020. We need to keep our guards up. Uh, we need to exercise three things. First, one, wear your mask. Two, wash your hands. Three, watch your distance, social distance. Let's, brothers and sisters, let's take care of ourselves and one another. Don't be so audacious and uh, and, and proud that you think that uh, Corona can't harm you and that you can't carry the virus to somebody else. That is being uh, unwise. The Bible says that we ought to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Use wisdom, brothers and sisters. Still yet, don't go into large gatherings. Don't go places unnecessarily. I know we're getting cabin fever and we all would love to be back to our normal routine. And most certainly we would love to be back at church. Amen. But we need to continue to be faithful, vigilant, praying and watching and waiting for God to give us the okay. Amen. Amen. Please do that, my brothers and sisters. Uh, we're praying for all those who have lost loved ones, who have, uh, who have gone through the contracting the virus. God spared your life. We're praying for you. Praying for all those health care workers and those who are on the front line. We're praying that the vaccine would be uh, dissimulated uh, like it should be. Uh, that they would come up with that plan, they would rapidly be able to uh, dis dissimulate it, uh, and we would uh, be able to take it, those of you who decide to take it, uh, we pray that it would be effective, and it would help us to come back to normalcy in our society. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for uh, being with us today for this word from the mouth, and we thank you for your prayers, your encouragements. They mean so much. 
God bless you. Thank you for your your likes on uh, Facebook and and uh, your uh, subscribing to YouTube and your notes of encouragement and, and praise to God for what God is doing. Oh, give Him glory. Give Him praise. Amen. I want to thank you also for your faithful giving of your tithes and your offerings. Uh, you have been faithful in that, and we want to encourage you to do that. And this is a new year. Perhaps you haven't been a tither before. Maybe maybe you haven't taken the tithing challenge that God said. He said, try me in this. Bring the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And try me, test me in this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you will not have room enough to receive. And those of you who are tithers, like myself, we know that God is faithful to his word. And uh, we sing that song in church, you can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. For the more you give, the more he gives to you. So just keep giving, because it's really true that you can't beat God's giving, no matter how how you try. God bless you and God keep you. May he supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory through and by Christ Jesus. Again, uh, continue to follow us on Facebook. Invite your friends. Take somebody say, tune in. Uh, this is the first Sunday of the year. Tune in and, and listen on, on Facebook uh, or YouTube. Uh, and 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 be a blessing. Let that be. Maybe that might be your ministry to encourage somebody else to help get them on track. Many have drifted away during this time because they haven't been able to go to the church building. But how many of you know that the church lives in us? So let's be an encourager to encourage others. Amen. Amen. Here's a word from the Lord. Uh, it's found in. The book of Job, the 33rd chapter, verse 14, and also in Luke, the 19th chapter, verse 40. Uh, we'll go to Luke second, but in Job, the 33rd chapter, verse 14, it says, For God speaks, excuse me, for God does speak. Now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. I'll read it again. For God does speak now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. And then in Luke 19, verse 40, uh, these are the words of our Lord Jesus. He says, but he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Hallelujah. If these would keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God endures forever. Amen. Amen. Would you bow your heads? Oh, Lord God, we praise you and we thank you for this first Sunday in January 2021. You have brought us through and we praise you. We look for a word for you to guide us as we start this journey. I pray, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable and power by you who are, is our strength and our redeemer. I pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Uh, Job 33, verse 14. I want to read it from the New Living Translation. It says, for God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. 
And Jesus said, I tell you that if these, these people who are shouting and praising, if they should keep their peace, the rocks would immediately cry out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to use as a subject, uh, put a tag on those texts. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. One of the features on a TV remote control, and I forgot to bring my remote control. <laughs> but one of the features, they have a lot of features on there. You have volume, you have pause, you have rewind, you have fast forward, you have channel up, channel down. Uh, but one of the features that I love is the, the mute button the mute button. If uh, I'm on a business call, uh, such as talking with Dell computer, trying to troubleshoot my problems with the computer, uh, it doesn't require my full attention while they are troubleshooting, so I can hit mute and I can do something else. Love it. I, if I uh, think I hear something outside, mm, uh, and 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 I'm not sure what it is, I can hit the mute on the TV, and I can listen even while I'm still watching. Or if my wife is calling me, I hit the mute button and I say, "Yes, baby." What can I get for you, my dearest? I love that mute button. On our mobile phones, mute is a great feature because while someone is talking to you, you can mash the mute button and you can listen or you can say something to somebody else uh, and the person on the other end of the phone won't hear you. Well, when COVID-19 pandemic hit, it caused the world to take a communication, its communication to another level, a virtual level of communicating. Medical professionals, governments, businesses, national and state agencies, courts, schools, families, and even, yes, even the church began to communicate by virtual methods. Uh, we discovered, a lot of us discovered things like Skype and free conference call and freeconference.com and Google Hangout and Zoom. Those are just a few of the virtual tools that we began to use. And one feature that's common to all of them, one necessary and important tool that's desired by the moderator or the host of the conference call in order to have an orderly and fruitful conference call is the mute button. Because the mute button allows the host, the, the moderator, the initiator, listen, the initiator of the call to mute participants, uh, those who have been invited, been invited to the meeting, when, when they enter the meeting or after they have entered the meeting and the meeting has begun, uh, the moderator can mute them. This, this is to protect the, the integrity of the call and to enhance the experience of the other participants and to respect the initiator of the call's presentation. Say amen, somebody. It still seems strange to me when I host a virtual call to tell people I'm going to mute everybody. You know, sometimes I think about that. I say, uh, Sometimes I wish that if I was in the pulpit, I could just mute everybody who was not uh, paying attention or whatever. But, but I have to say that 
because uh, I'm not, uh, because uh, I'm about to share something uh, that needs to be heard. I, I need to be heard, brothers and sisters, over the rustling of papers, over the conversations in the background, over the pots and the scraping of plates while people are eating. I need to be heard over dogs barking and sirens uh, wailing uh, on the outside. When I hear noise, I have to mute the person. Sometimes I can tell who the person is. Not everybody, but sometimes I can tell who the person is. Why? Because their box lights up. Their box lights up, and I, and I know who it is. I have to put them on mute because their noise, uh, their, their, their station is, their, is a distraction to myself and to others. And today, I want us, I want to use our newly uh, familiar virtual call muting as an analogy uh, of the believers, our relationship with God. Ah, uh, yes, I want to use that. I want to put it up beside the virtual call meeting, beside our, our relationship with God. I have three points. I have three points. And, and point number one is that God mutes us to get our attention. God mutes us to get our attention. He's, he's the moderator. He's the host. He mutes us to get our attention. Uh, I, I don't know if you realize what God did in 2020 and is still doing through this pandemic. Uh, actually, uh, long before this pandemic and, and the surrounding events of 2020, God, the ultimate host and moderator of divine and human interaction was speaking, but people were listening like we should. Uh, the Old Testament saint uh, Job had a friend named Elihu who said in uh, chapter 33, verse 14, God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. People do not perceive that it's this God speaking. And certainly God does speak. God speaks in so many ways. He, he speaks through fire and flood. He speaks through victories and defeat. He speaks through joy and sorrows, earthquakes and eclipses. He, he speaks through sickness and, and hell. He speaks through accidents and appointments. God speaks when the sun is shining and when the rain is falling. God is always speaking. He speaks in whispers and he speaks in shouts. Hallelujah, somebody. And the question is, are you listening? Are you listening? Bible scholar Matthew Henry said, and I read, I read that he said, what enemies we are to our own welfare. Man perceives it not. That is, he does not heed it or regard it, does not discern or understand it, is not aware that it is the voice of God, nor does he receive and reveal the things that are revealed, for they are foolishness to him. He, he stops his ears, stands in his own light, rejects the counsel of God against him, and, is, and so is never the wiser. Hallelujah. And how true that is, my brothers and sisters. Uh, man, God, God is speak. God, God reveals things. It, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when, when we, we were children. And somebody, one of our siblings was 
telling us the right thing to do, uh, telling us the truth, and we would put our hands in our ears and act like we couldn't hear. We didn't want to hear what they had to say, even though we knew that there is truth. Throughout our lives, brothers and sisters, and especially in 2020, God has been speaking, and for the most part, we have refused to listen. Yes, 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 yes. We have refused to listen. And so, my brothers and sisters, God hit the mute button and said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted above the nations. I will be exalted above the empires. I will be exalted above the thrones of men, the presidencies and the, the, the uh, royalty uh, thrones of men. I will be exalted above the nations and I will be exalted above the earth. Psalm 46 verse 1. Yes, God muted everybody. He didn't just pick and choose. He, he, he muted everybody. And yet, some refused to recognize the God-sized mute and continue, even to this day, to live as usual, ignoring the divine protocol of the divine host and moderator that he has set. God muted the entertainment arena because we chose pleasure over his presence. We, we'd rather be at a ball game. We'd rather be watching the game. We'd rather be on a cruise or on vacation rather than in his presence. Oh, yeah, we, we go to church on Sunday, but we want to hurry up and get out of there. The preacher is preaching too long, and we need to leave because I got things to do to my, my own pleasure. God muted uh, the entertainment that, 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 that we couldn't go to the movies, uh, and even the people in Hollywood couldn't even make movies. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, he muted the economies of, of countries and especially the United States, because on our money, on that which men work for, what we sweat for, for, for which we get up every day and go to work for, for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, all that money that we work for, on that money it says, in God we trust. But yet, we don't even pray to God. We don't even we don't even talk to God. We're not even listening to God. We, we trust the money more than God. This nation, I, I can't remember a national day of prayer, a call for national day of prayer from the leadership of this country or the state government of this country. We, we, we talk about it, a good talk in God we trust. We got to look out for the economy, but we're looking out for the money and stuff. Uh, instead of the one who blessed us with the money. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, God shut down. He muted education because we chose to, to, to try to, to learn without seeking he who is the fountain of wisdom. Hallelujah. Uh, Solomon, the wisest man ever, said in Proverbs 1.7, uh, the fear, the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Any, anybody know any fools who, who, who think that they know more about creation and, 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 and man and how he should live more than, than God? And we can't even mention God's name in school. We can't even call on Jesus. We can't even. God muted the educational system and education had to scramble to try to be able to teach the little knowledge that they had. And, and, and even God muted ecclesiastical gatherings. He, he, he muted church gatherings. He muted church folk from getting together because the church, yeah, the church had gotten stuck on being stuck between Four walls. Yeah, come see us in here between these four walls. We're the greatest 
ever between these four walls, but but what out but what about outside these four walls? Let me test your faith. Let me see how how real you are when you can't go to church, huh? When you can't go and and, and be on display in the choir and in the pulpit and at the door uh, uh, in your fancy outfit. Let me see what, what how how much of a saint and how devoted you are to me when you are by yourself at home. Have you picked up your Bible yet? Are you spending time with God? God said, be muted because the Lord is still in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him, Habakkuk said, in other words, God mutes our lives because he wants us, uh, uh, as my daddy said, stop flapping your jaws and listen. Uh-huh. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason, to listen, to perceive, and to learn from the original OG. Yeah, yeah. God is the original OG. He, he, he's the, he's the original omnipotent God. He's the original omnipresent God, and he's the original omniscient, all-knowing God. So stop trusting in your own ingenuity, and see how ignorant we are compared to His infinite wisdom. So, brothers and sisters, on, on, on our uh, virtual calls, the moderator says, I'm going to mute you. And, and the question today, this first Sunday uh, of 2021, the question today on a personal and, and spiritual level is, why has God muted me? Uh, why has God, uh, you, you and I need to ask ourselves, what noise and distractions do I have in my life that causes God to mute me? What habits do I have that cause me to be muted? What, what sin am I dabbling in and, and, and indulged in that, that causes me to be muted? What, what relationships do I have that cause that? What what idols and do I have in my life? What attitudes, uh, what negative attitudes, what self-righteous attitudes do I have in my life? What possessions, what am I clinging to and holding on to in my life that causes God to mute me? Oh, uh, oh, uh, mm. I, 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 I have another job. I work at W.J. Keenan High School. And, of course, we are doing things virtually now. We have a virtual classroom, Google Teams. We, 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 we have class, and, and the students come in at the time of their class. I have one student, and to protect him, I, I'll just use the name Ike. Nobody will know who the Ike is except for me. But Ike comes in, sometimes he's late, and when he comes in, he comes in noisy. He comes in talking. He comes in making noise, and I say, please mute yourself. Sometimes he forgets to mute himself while we're in class, and he, he starts singing, and he starts talking to someone in the room, and I say, please mute yourself. Uh, sometimes I can't get his attention. He's in there and, and, and he, he's going and doing this and, and that, and, and he's so loud that he can't even hear me calling him. And, 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 and listen, watch, watch this. Sometimes it's not even his fault. Sometimes he's in the room, and others will come in, little children will come in. God bless his heart. He, he's trying to do his work, and the little children come in making noise. And, and, and I said, mute yourself. Mute yourself, uh, and sometimes I just can't get his attention. I, I have to remove him from the virtual classroom so I can get his attention. He, finally, he'll realize that I'm not even in the class, and then he'll call back, and we'll let him in. I say that to say that God 
mutes us. He, he stops us. He shuts us down. He quarantines us to get our attention. See, sometimes we have too much rattling from raggedy lives. We have too much noise from people who are in our lives that don't mean any good and we don't need to be hanging out and hanging with. I know it's Google Hangout, but we don't need to be hanging out with certain people, even if they are believers and they're not doing and uplifting you and helping you. And some of us, some of us, some of us should be glad that 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 that's all that God does. That, that's all that he has done is to, to mute us instead of booting us out of his presence. Booting us out of his, his presence that we still have a, a consciousness. See, that thing about I, I, I boot him out. He, he realized he comes to himself and he comes back in the classroom. See, if God were to boot us out, he, he deserves to boot some of us out. But if he, he, he only silenced us, and, 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 and if he hadn't silenced us, some of us would be insane. We would lose our mind. He, instead, of, instead of booting us out, he just muted us. Hallelujah, somebody. Some of us would be in some terrible, horrible situations if God hadn't shut us down. He does it. He does it to get our attention. God mutes us, point number one, to get our attention. And, but the great thing is this, point number two, we can, we can, we can, we can mute ourselves. You see, during, during the course of a conference call, we can be, there can be several instances of people muting and unmuting themselves because sometimes it's it's necessary. It's necessary because you may have to, something arises, you may need to leave the room and, and, and do something. Uh, but the, the, the sometimes funny thing is when they return and try to speak, they are unheard because they have muted themselves. Mm -mm -mm, Lord have mercy. Uh, and there we are. We are watching their lips move with no sound. Uh, they're just talking. They're just going on, uh, absorbed in themselves, that, and, and nobody can hear them. They talk on and on until several of us will shout to them, you're muted, you're muted. Then, then, then there's the, the searching look. They're looking. They're looking on the computer screen for for the unmute button, and and and, and then they finally find it, and they began talking again. Let me ask you, brothers and sisters, are you talking and not being heard? Huh? Are you praying to God, and and it seems like God not even hearing you? Are you trying to be a witness, trying to, using religious jargon and language, talking to somebody who's not saved, uh, another believer, and you have no impact, you have no, no, no influence on them? Are you, are you trying this or, or that and not getting anywhere? Maybe it's because you got up and left where you were with God and you haven't unmuted yourself again. You see, let me share this with you. There are consequences to muting yourself with God. See, number one, one of the consequences of muting yourself with God, it halts God's answers to your prayer. Yeah, when you're not, when you're not paying attention like you should, and you're not listening to God, uh, you have sin in your life, God didn't even hear you. That's right. David said in Psalm 66, verse 18, if I regard, uh, if I entertain, if I host iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. 
I, I don't think you can get any plainer than that. If, if, if I see sin and I know that sin and I go to, to that sin and entertain that sin and do that sin, uh, and I'm a re unrepentant of my sin, I don't think you can walk in there and talk to God. Uh, that just, that's just like a child being disrespectful, doing what they want to do, going out there, living any kind of life, and then you just you, you think you're just going to walk back in as if nothing, no consequences. God will not hear our, he won't hear us when we regard the iniquity in our heart. But then not only does it halt God's answer, it, it, it hinders others. It hinders others who are watching and listening to you think that you're the only one. You think that you have it so together as a believer that you can do whatever you want to do and it does not affect anybody else. Oh, my, my, my. Because, because I'm, I, I can drink and it, it won't affect anybody else but me. It's just me. I, I can do this. I can talk about people and because I'm, I'm righteous. And, and, and you don't think that that affects other people who are listening to you, younger believers uh, uh, who are watching, your children who are watching and listening to you. Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul said, so if I hurt one of the Lord's followers by eating. You see, some people have a problem with eating meats that were offered to the idol gods. The young believers said, you can't eat that because that's offered to, 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 to ISIS or Offer to to uh, Dinah. You you can't eat that. Those are the, the, the Greek God. You you can't eat that meat because it's offered to God. Paul Paul knew that he was mature, and he said I, everything that's, that's sanctified by God, we can we can enjoy because God has sanctified it. But if it causes my brother to stumble, then I won't do it. Paul, Paul said, if, if I hurt one of the Lord's followers by what I eat, I will never eat meat again as long as I live. Bless his name. Some of us are too self-centered. We forget that we are harming and hindering others when we are on mute. Folk, folk are looking at us and we are on mute just acting all kind of way. But, but God said, I, I don't even hear you. And you're hurting those who are in this, this virtual call with me. Not only did you hurt him, God, God, God uh, halts his, his answers and you hinder others, but you hurt yourself when you mute yourself by choosing not to fully participate in the blessing, in the meeting where the blessing of the Lord is. Uh, those, those, those of you who, who are not a part of the, the teaching ministry of the church have, have muted yourselves. It's some folks, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. You, you say, first give an honor to God who is the head of my life. And we don't want to, we don't want to even read the Bible. We don't even want to be in Sunday school. We don't want to, we don't want to be in Bible study. We don't want to be in a discipleship group where we can learn about the one who is the head of our lives. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But, 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 but you mute yourself and you hurt yourself when you exclude yourself uh, by, not, by choosing not to grow in Christ, by, by, by choosing not to deepen your faith by learning the word of God, by learning the principles of God, by learning about the armor of God, the protection of God, so that you can win the warfare for God, hallelujah, somebody, by not, not fully participating in the fellowship of God with the saints, you are hurting yourself. Some folks say, I don't need to be with anybody else. You know, and I believe, I believe, I do believe that when, when we're able to go back to church, well, some people will choose not to go back to church, not because of COVID, but because I don't have to go to church. I don't have to be bothered with those Negroes in church. Yes, yes. But, but the scripture says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together with other believers. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, now, I know. I know some of us have phobias about technology, and we refuse to come out of our comfort zone when it comes to technology. We won't try. Listen, some folk won't try 
cell phone. I, I believe some folk don't won't try a, 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 a digital phone in their home. They still got the, the rotary phone. And they pick up the phone and they got a party line. No, I'm just joking about that. But some folk won't won't try cell phones. They and some folk have cell phones. Don't y'all flip phone people get mad at me? But they still got the flip phone, which, which has no capacity for for new uh, technology and, and a lot of things that you could be a part of and things that you can learn from a smartphone. You you're missing out on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, whew, I tell you, uh, uh, some people uh, uh, have a phobia even about computers. I, I don't want to learn a computer. I'm, I'm too old for that. God bless my mother. She was 92 years old, and she, 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 want, she, she would bug me and call me about, can you come over here and show me, the, can you give me a lesson on the computer? Can you show me how to... I, can you, I can't get my messages on my, my smartphone, but I admire her. Yes, sir, I admire her because she would not stop learning. Glory to God. Some folk won't even try. Hallelujah. They, they have fun. But listen, I can identify with you. I, I'm, not, no, I'm not condemning. I can identify you because there was a time when I said, I don't need a computer. I got my... I got my paper folder right here, and I got all my notes. But then when I started using that computer, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Glory, thank God for a computer. So much you can do on a computer. Yes, yes, yes. I know a whole lot of people use smartphones and computers and all that stuff for the wrong reason. But think about what you can do for the glory of God through technology. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. When, when, when cell phones came out, I said, there ain't not no, there's no reason people need to be riding around with a with a cell phone. All they got to do is wait 10 minutes and go to the, the phone booth. Young people don't even know anything about the phone booth, but y'all call when you get home. You know, if it's that important, they'll, they'll leave a message. But praise God for this computer. Uh, thank God for this, this computer in my hand. I can, I can go all over the world. I can get uh, countless information. I can do countless things. I, I, can, I can send you a text message. I can send a mass call out. I, I, I can do my sermons on my cell phone. Hallelujah, somebody. God blessed us with this. I, I used to say, oh, ain't no reason for folk to be on Facebook. What they need to do is get off of Facebook and get their face in the book. But you know what God said? us down, shut the church down. Now I say, folks, y'all need to join us on Facebook. Join us on YouTube. Now I haven't got with the Twitter. I haven't got with the Instagram and all that yet, but technology is not going away. Virtual ministry is not going away. We, uh, It's not the enemy. Technology is here to stay. Uh, and so don't mute yourself uh, out of technology. God, God, God said in Isaiah 43, verse 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. I'm going to do a new thing now. Now it shall spring forth. It, it just, that's, that's what technology did, this, this virtual ministry. It just sprung forth on us. We weren't looking for it. We weren't trying to do it just to record the sermons and, and a DVD was good. Uh-huh. But this thing sprung forth on us. Yes, it did. And, and Isaiah, God said, now it's a spring forth. Shall you not know it? He asked the question. I will even make a road. Watch this. In the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Uh, Y'all missed that. God said, I will make a road even in the pandemic with this technology, so my word will go out. Hallelujah, somebody. I, I'm praying, I'm praying that this year will be a year where we unmute our fears and embrace 
more of the new thing that God is doing in the church through technology. Yes, we might have to spend some more money. Yes, we might have to do certain things, get certain training and, and, and have other people do certain things. But glory to God, let the church roll on through the word of God and technology. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. We're not going to throw away traditional worship when we go back, whenever that is, but we need to unmute and step up our game. God, God is not satisfied with us doing like we have been doing in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it was good enough for my daddy and my granddaddy and my great-granddaddy, it's good enough for me. Well, why don't you just go back? Oh, Pastor Gopher, you don't need to say that. But why don't you just go back to when we didn't have air condition, when we didn't have carpet on the floor and, and, and we just opened the windows and the flies and all that. Night bugs would come in. Walks would come in. You know, you're trying to have church and the bugs would be bugging you. Hallelujah. Let's get with God. God is doing a new thing. We need to step up our game. God mutes us to get our attention and we, we, we mute ourselves by not paying attention. But then lastly, we can unmute, this is the good news, we can unmute and give God our attention. In, in most virtual programs, the moderator has the capacity to mute the participants if they're too noisy or distracting others and, and not following protocol. The moderator can click a button and silence them without their permission. But in, a, in, in, in virtual programs like Zoom, uh, the moderator can't reverse the mute. Uh, he can't unmute them. He can mute them, but he can't unmute them. What he has to do is he has to extend an invitation and ask the participants to unmute themselves. And the moderator, the moderator can't do it for them. They have to do it for themselves. And, and what I'm trying to tell you is that God has extended an invitation today for you to unmute yourself, to unsilence yourself so that you can express yourself. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, on our virtual Bible study, when I'm getting ready to teach, I say, I tell everybody, I'm getting ready to mute everybody. And then I began to teach the word of God. And I teach for about an hour, hour 15 minutes. And I'm enjoying myself sharing the word of God with the muted. But at the conclusion of the lesson, I announce to the muted that you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself and you can ask questions and you can express yourself. And after having been talking to them for over an hour, it's good, I say it's good, to hear other voices. Some have questions. Some need answers. Some need things repeated. But hey, I said hey, there are some who just want to express gratitude. Some who just want to give thanks and appreciation for the word of God and for the teacher. Well, in, in, in a conference call, in a Zoom call, the participants can thank me, but I'm just an instrument. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a conduit for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you can thank me, how much more should you give praise? Should you shout thanksgiving? You should unmute yourself and give God glory. Give him praise. Give him your hallelujah. For he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. 
I come today on this first Sunday in 2021 to tell you, encourage you to unmute yourself and give God the praise. Express yourself. Look back and see where the Lord has brought you from. Hallelujah, somebody. The prophet Isaac Jeremiah said to himself that he was unable to refrain from speaking the truth, the truth of God. He said, if I say I will not mention God, not speak anymore of God's name, then there's something on fire inside of me and I'm weary with holding it in and I can't keep it. Yeah, let me say it another way. He said, if I never, I say, I, I said that I'll never mention the Lord or speak of his name. His burning, but his burning is burning in my heart. It's like fire. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. I am worn out. I am weary from trying to hold it in and I can't do it. In other words, Jeremiah said, I got to unmute myself because I got a burning, a burning on the inside and I just can't keep it to myself. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Some pious religious folk were standing by Jesus one day when Jesus came to town and the people in his company, the people on his conference call had unmuted themselves. They had unleashed themselves. They were unhindered and they were giving praise to Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And the pious, pompous religious folks said, don't you hear them? You ought to silence them. You ought to mute them. But Jesus, I said, Jesus, Jesus endorsed them. And he seemed to invite the whole world who were silent to unmute themselves. For he said, I tell you that if these, if these hold their peace, the rocks, the rocks, the rocks will immediately cry out. And I don't know about you, but I don't want no rocks crying out for me because the Lord been good. He's been good to me. He's brought me from a mighty long way. And I dare not forget. I dare not forget to give him glory. Give him praise. Give him the hallelujah. 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 So brother and sister, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. In 2021, you ought to unmute yourself and tell the Lord how good he is. And if you can't tell it, let me tell it. Because God is good. I say God is good. God is good. All the time. And all the time. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. In, in my classroom. In my classroom. Uh, uh, even on the virtual calls. With Bible says Sometimes. People will be talking. As I mentioned before. They'll just be talking. And talking. And nobody can hear them. And everybody shout. You need to unmute yourself. You need to unmute. Including me the moderator. Unmute yourself. The moderator and the participants are saying. Unmute yourself. God and all the saints are saying. Unmute yourself. And then. The person. They're looking at the screen. Well, how do you unmute yourself? How do, how do you unmute yourself? Well, prayer first. Say, look at the bottom of the screen. Look at the bottom of the screen. Do you see a microphone? 
They say, yeah. do you see the microphone with the red line through it? The red line through the microphone. They say, yeah. Click on the microphone with the red line through it. And they click on it. And they are unmuted. Hallelujah. But God, God today, God, God is here to somebody. You're, you're, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. How do you do it? You need to look down. Not, not look up, but you need to look down and say, Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And when you're looking down, you ought to see the cross. The cross with the red blood, the red stripe, the red. By his stripes, the blood, the blood came streaming down. See the blood on the cross. And if you cry out and thank God for the blood of Jesus, who paid for your sins, you call on the name of Jesus and ask him to save you. Ask him to unmute your life. He'll do it. I'm a witness. He will do it. So how about it, brothers and sisters? How about it, my beloved? Why don't you unmute yourself? What better time than right now? In fact, that's all you have is right now. Tomorrow is not promised. Jesus said, if you will hear my voice today, today, if you will hear, Pardon, not your heart. Call on the name of Jesus and be saved. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you for sparing our lives on this side to see 2021. Thank you for being a God of another chance. You blessed us. More than we deserve, more than we can even say, more than we even know. You are good. And so today we come confessing our sins to you. And we come unmuting ourselves, opening ourselves so that you can speak to us and we can speak back to you. Take away our sin, cleanse, cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can communicate with you and have fellowship with you. Save the person that's unsaved. Give them a new life. You said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Make somebody new today. Save them. Deliver them. Person who's struggling with addiction, struggling with habits of chronic illness or whatever, move in their lives, oh God. Show yourself mighty and strong. We pray for relationships. We pray that Healing will come to marriages. Healing will come to relationships of family members and, and relationship with other individuals. Heal, move, oh God, in our lives. Help us to see as you see us. Loved, but in need of mercy and grace. Have your way in our lives, Lord. Bless this world that it might hear your voice. It might be unmuted and give glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us. Joining us. If you desire to contact us, uh, our webpage uh, is on the screen. Uh, you can go there, click on Contact Us, and you can uh, check the appropriate box whether you want information, whether you want to join the church, you just want to be saved, you want somebody to pray with you. We encourage you to get connected, open yourself up, and stay connected in 2021. God bless you and God keep you. Again, thank you for joining us, us for a word.